is Zella Prince, and welcome back to yet another FNAF reaction video. And today, we're going to be reacting to the Finance of Friday Security Breach Ruined DLC storyline and all the endings explained. The video is by Super Horror Bro. I've been waiting for a couple of almost a week now for a video like this to come out, and it has finally come out quite recently because I know people instantly beat the uh, Ruined DLC. On day one, I never play. I didn't play it myself, but I was waiting for people to play it. And I finished watching uh, Markiplier's Let's Play and the ending he got. So I know about that ending and that there is a motorcycle driving by really quickly. Um, but so I wanted to finish pl watching uh, Markiplier do his little his uh, Let's Play on it before reacting to all the endings explained because I know one of the endings. It kind of confused me just a little bit, so I want to wait until a video like this came out so I could react to it. Because I didn't do that when Security Breach came out. I kind of just did it, everything else on my own. So, with that being said, we're just going to get right into today's video because I don't really have much else to say. In three, two, one, go. Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we return to the ruined hallways of Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex as we step into the shoes of a little girl named Cassie searching for her missing friend Gregory. This video will be broken up into two sections. The first, a quick overview of Cassie's journey through the Pizzaplex, and the second, a look at the game's multiple endings with a theory as to what those endings mean, as well as how the door. story of- Okay, it was just Amazon. Hey, at least this time it wasn't a phone call. I already got that over with. ...for endings with a theory as to what those endings mean, as well as how the story oh. of Ruin ties into the one previously told in Security Breach. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into another animatronic nightmare. This Yay. is the story of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach Ruin Explained. The return to the pizza place. It seems several years have passed since the events of Security Breach, and Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex has been long abandoned and grown into a state of ruin. Food rots, graffiti cup. Oh, I thought this would have taken place like maybe like seven or so months later. I didn't realize it could have taken place years later. But walls decay and the entire building has been condemned. One fateful evening, a young girl named Cassie is called to the ruins of a pizzaplex by her friend Gregory. Gregory? Gregory? You there? I got your message. Gregory? Are you there? Gregory is nowhere to be seen, so Cassie begins to search the old building for him. She soon locates a flashlight, which allows her to venture deeper into the dark depths of the building. Before long, she locates a Roxy talkie, and hears Gregory desperately calling for help. Gregory? Uh, I got your message. Where are you? Help! Something grabbed me! It won't let me go! You have to find me! I'm trapped in the sinkhole under the raceway! It is now up to Cassie to locate her trapped friend and free him from imprisonment. Cassie- You know what's something to take away from between Security Breach and the Ruin DLC is that in regular Security Breach, we never saw, really saw much of Gregory's own, uh, Gregory himself. I mean, we saw him a couple times in some of the cutscenes, but here we see more Cassie, like, appear more physically than in terms of the game development itself, you know, you, you know, I'm trying to go with this, but it's just weird that that happened. I don't know why. Crawls through a vent and finds herself in the Pizzaplex kitchens, where she encounters the withered endo of Glamrock Chica. Before long, she locates another useful tool, a hacking device known as the Faz Wrench. A Faz Wrench. It's just like my dad's. It seems Cassie's father is an employee of Fazbear Entertainment, working as an engineer, as she states he owns one of these wrenches himself. This could hint at Cassie or her father being a protagonist in the upcoming VR game Help Wanted 2, as we can see from its trailer that the hack points the wrench can be used on appear in that game too. Oh, I but didn't even notice that's that. that's a theory for another time. Help in the entity. Cassie is soon attacked. And he's probably going to answer it 
in the video, but is the entity a remnant or a broken shard of glitch trap? You might answer it, but I just want to throw that question out there. ...by the withered endo of Monty Gator, and startled, plunges into the sewer, where she is then washed into the ruins of Monty Golf. Here, she encounters a servo bot who holds out a very familiar mask for her to take. This is the very mask that once controlled Vanessa in her Vanny form, while under the influence of Glitch Trap. There he is. Of course, Cassie doesn't know this, and so takes the mask and places it on her face. While wearing this mask, she is able to view reality through a different lens, gaining access to previously blocked areas of the Pizzaplex, as well as getting a look at the inner workings of the animatronics, and even travel through portals that lead to a simulated world within the mask itself, Which makes no known sense. as the Vanny Network. The mask oh, okay, also introduces Cassie to an AI version of Halpy. This portable AI guides Cassie through each area of the Pizzaplex. See what I mean? We see... Cassie all the time. We never, we never really saw Gregory that often when, when Security Breach first launched. Offering helpful hints that allow her to overcome any hardship thrown her way. However, there is a risk to wearing this mask. Prolonged usage of the device spawns in a Bonnie-like apparition known only as the Entity. This ominous ghost in the machine feels somewhat similar to previous FNAF villain Glitch Trap, yeah, and attempts to stop Cassie as she moves through the Pizzaplex and shut down security systems that keep the building in lockdown. The entity is able to call in nearby animatronics and use them to hunt the poor girl as she searches for her missing friend. However, these animatronics don't seem to enjoy being controlled in this way and wish to be freed. This is seen in an early cutscene as the Eclipse animatronic fights to escape said control. I, I, I am trapped in a gap! Reboot! Reboot! We need to be whole! You want me to reboot you? With this? Don't you. Don't you. Cassie is able to use her newly acquired Faz Wrench to free certain animatronics from their traumatized state. Huh. She also comes across servo bots throughout her adventure that are experiencing lingering AR trauma as a result of this antivirus program. She helps these out by deactivating them. Okay, so Mark probably was right. There was a significance to deactivating them. Happy and Gregory are sometimes able to intervene and banish the entity for short spells by activating a jammer signal in the Vanny network. What happened to it? <laughs> yeah, with my help, I have been helping with the signal jam. That rabbit thing won't bother you. The entity uses a trick of its own to counteract this. It activates a device known as the AR inhibitor to lock Cassie in or out of the network and prevent her from either equipping or de-equipping the mask depending on the situation. Huh. These inhibitors must be shut down in order to proceed and gain access to the Vanny mask once more. Security measures. In order to reach Gregory in the depths of Roxy Raceway, Cassie must travel through the ruined Pizzaplex and disable all of the security nodes. These are always guarded both by the mysterious entity and the ruined animatronics it commands. Cassie encounters ruined versions of Chica, Monty, Roxy, the Music Men, and even a headless Glamrock Freddy during her quest. Which is probably, which probably broken Glamrock Freddy is probably one of the more scarier ones out of all the ruined animatronics. However, despite these animatronics being kept under the control of the entity, some are still able to hold on to their original good programming. This becomes apparent when Cassie encounters Roxy for the first time. Just as Roxanne Wolf is about to attack, Cassie screams out, and this action jolts Roxy free of the Entity's control. I don't remember seeing that cutscene. Give me back my eyes! Ah! Let go! Let go! I'm sorry. However, Cassie must later deactivate the wolf herself, as she learns Roxy holds the last remaining security node. In this touching sequence, Cassie says goodbye to her animatronic friend, who still remembers the little girl's first visit to the Pizzaplex on her birthday. Your special day. I this is probably still one of the most 
saddest cutscenes in probably um, security breach history. Because there, there were some sad scenes, but probably this is probably one of the more emotional ones because it has to do with the personal connection between the character and the animatronic. I mean, we saw a glare mark for it with, uh, with Freddy, but it wasn't like a mutual friendship thing throughout the whole game. I mean, well, I mean, it was, but it wasn't like on the level of familiarity that Cassidy had with Roxy. It's, it was different. Amber, your special day. Do you still like carrot cake? Cassie? What are you doing? Yeah, see? So sorry. I love carrot cake. Happy birthday, Cassie. Fox. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. With Roxy deactivated, Cassie has now reached the end of her adventure and is able to travel into the sinkhole beneath Roxy Raceway to seek out her missing friend Gregory. There we go. The Mimic, which is apparently something from the books, which even I, I didn't even know existed. Which is weird. Apparently it was in one of the books from what I heard the day before watching this. Cassie, still mourning the death of her friend Roxy, travels down the elevator and into the sinkhole where the ruins of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place are located. It's she makes there. her way through a series of caves until she reaches the area where the burn trap ending took place during the events of Security I was gonna say, that was the burn Here trap ending. she comes ending. across one of the diner's old animatronic mascots. Candy, ah, Cadet, Candy Cadet, who tells her a cryptic story about a monster able to mimic the actions of others. And now I will tell you a story. Oh, because when I watched Mark Blader, he didn't get the full story, he only got like half of it. About a mother and a little boy who lived alone in a cabin in the dark woods. There was a monster in the woods, but the mother caught it and kept it locked in the basement. The monster always made scary noises at night, but the mother would tell the boy not to worry because it could never get. Is it the same voice actor who did the voice? Oh, wait, no. Candy Cadet didn't have a voice actor. It was voice AI generated. I forgot about that. Then she would say the boy lullaby to sleep. One day, the monster stopped growling and instead listened and learned the lullaby. The next day, when mother went out to find food. The monster sang a lullaby from the basement. The okay, yeah, this is the part I didn't know. <laughs> After hearing this that was mysterious the last part you didn't tale, hear. Cassie reaches the depths of the facility beneath the diner and here discovers the origin of the rabbit like entity that has been stalking her. It exists as a security AI known as MXES. Oh, it's Cassie a security shuts down the AI. AI and banishes the entity for good. She then hears Gregory calling from behind a freshly sealed wall of concrete. Gregory, are you in there? The stupid door won't open. Well, it looks like someone. Okay, I thought the entity was uh, basically a remnant growth trap, but no, it was just a security AI to make sure people wouldn't get in and release the mimic, which. Makes sense now. Poured concrete over the door? How am I supposed to get rid of concrete? Cassie hacks a nearby forklift truck, which then breaks through the wall and allows her to locate her missing friend. However, after dropping into the adjacent room, Cassie comes to a horrifying realization. The voice guiding her this entire time has not been Gregory at all, but rather a horrifying artificial intelligence known as the Mimic. You saved me. Is there more information on the mimic? Gregory? On the internet? I know it's it's from book material, but I don't know its great significance, you know? You're not Gregory. What are you? I Gregory. The Mimic is an animatronic creation which evolved from an artificial intelligence anomaly. 
We'll speak more about this at the end of the video. Okay. But this creature was the one discussed during Candy Cadet's story, and is able to mimic anything the AI comes into contact with, in this case, Gregory's voice. Roxanne Wolf suddenly emerges from the shadows, reactivating after Cassie shut down the security system. She begins to fight the Mimic, allowing Cassie to flee, who is then contacted by the real Gregory, who confirms she was tricked and promises to help her escape. Cassie, can you hear me? Gregory? Is that really you? I mean, really you. I've been trying to reach you all night. I'm not at the pizza place. Something's trying to trick you. You're a bit late. This thing in the basement sounds just like you. How do I know this is you for real? Is there another option? You need to get out of there now. How? But how does Gregory know about it? Just follow the instructions. The secret endings. Here we go. Before we explain the game's default ending and how it ties into the events of Security Breach, let us first quickly run through each of the game's alternate endings. Quick disclaimer, okay. I am making this video during launch week, so it is entirely possible that another ending exists that has, and as this of writing ending, this I'm video, of. not yet been discovered. But with that said, here are the endings we currently know of. At the very end of the game, if we the ignore Gregory's ending? instructions after the second branching path during the cavern chase sequence, then we come across a glitching cutout taken from Fredbear's family diner. By equipping the Vanny Mask, Cassie is able to leap inside this cutout and an illusionary ending takes place where she finds herself on a hillside with huh. Gregory, Helpy and Vanessa. It seems this ending is one of the Mimic's VR simulations, luring Cassie into a false prison much in the same way it did with Vanessa when trapping her mind inside Princess Quest. Next oh. up we have the Scoop Room ending, a Mimic secret Scoop easter egg ending? ending that can be unlocked by locating four out of bounds cameras while using the portable security systems and then using these cameras to unlock four previously sealed doorways during the final chase sequence. This time when we meet the Mimic we notice its appearance has changed. The Mimic's endo now housed within a mangled mascot suit. Around the room the Mimic appears to us in, we can in fact see a range of other mascot costumes, what? which it seems to have borrowed pieces from. During the chase, instead of heading to the elevator, we can now enter through a previously locked doorway and trap the Mimic in the scooping room. This room is reminiscent to the one seen during the ending of FNAF Sister Location. The scooper latches onto the Mimic and scoops out its endo, leaving the suit lifeless on the floor. Oh. Okay then, but what's the mascot though? I don't think we've ever seen anything, at least I haven't seen anything related to those mascot costumes. It looks like the mediocre, mel like a mediocre melody suit, but it didn't really look like that to me. The default ending, which is. Now we've looked this at one, yeah. each alternate ending, let us turn our attention to the default ending. In this ending, Cassie follows Gregory's instructions over the walkie talkie and is led to a service elevator where she is able to escape the clutches of the Mimic with the twisted creature losing its arm in the process. However, Gregory tells Cassie he cannot allow the Mimic to escape and so plunges her further into the depths of the sinkhole. The Nexus security program was designed to keep it hidden, but you shut down the security and now it's free. It's not your fault. I know you did it for me, to save me, but we can't risk being followed. I'm sorry. Gregory? No! Is it like no matter what you do in Security Breach, Gregory is going to be a, a savage son of a gun, you know that? <laughs> He did the same thing to the other animatronics, and now he did it to his best friend. And I don't know if there's more to this cutscene, because when uh, Markiplier got this ending, he skipped through it and Roxy said something. So I wonder if there was more to it, so let me see. 
To further understand Gregory's motives and how this ending ties into the original story of oh, Security yeah, Breach, murder. we need to first establish which of the many endings to the base game was intended to be canon. Ruin provides several clues that allow us to conclude that the Escape with Vanessa ending is in fact the true ending to Security Breach. For those who don't remember that ending, here yeah, is a I quick remember. reminder. At the end of Security Breach, Gregory is given the choice to either leave the Pizzaplex at 6am when the lockdown lifts, or remain and try to save Vanessa from her corrupted Vanny state. To do so, Gregory must play each of the three Princess Quest arcade games to completion. By doing this, we are able to free Vanessa's mind from the control of Glitch Trap, and escape the Pizzaplex with her. Unfortunately, during this mission, Glamrock Freddy is attacked by a horde of corrupted security bots, his head being completely severed but remaining sentient. It is then suggested that Gregory, who it is implied was an orphan kid, is taken into the guardianship of a now freed Vanessa, and along with Freddy's head, the three live happily ever after. Now vowing to make sure the dark secrets of the Pizzaplex remain buried and locked away forevermore. The evidence to support this being true are as follows. During the ending, Vanny returns to her Vanessa's state after right, the removing the mask behind. and breaking free of Glitchtrap's control. The mask is left behind in the Pizzaplex, where it is later given to Cassie in the Ruined DLC. When we meet Freddy, he is found in a torn up state in Phaser Blast. This is the very where location he where he was attacked okay. and beheaded during that ending in Security Breach. Throughout the story of Ruin, Cassie comes across comic pages drawn by Gregory. <laughs> These pages illustrate all of the endings from Security Breach, oh. except the good Vanessa ending. As the other endings appear as comic book art, it implies these are simply ideas that came from the mind of Gregory, rather than something that actually happened. Oh. We find the Princess Quest arcade machine with a sword stuck through it in the ruins of Vanny's secret security room. This makes sense as Vanessa's mind was freed from its prison during the aforementioned ending. Finally, near the beginning of Ruin's story, we can briefly glimpse animatronic oh. amalgamation, the Blob, hiding in a war cavity. Since the Blob was destroyed alongside Burn Trap in Security Breach's secret ending, it suggests that ending was not actually canon. And so with oh. all this evidence in mind and the true ending established, it seems the friend Gregory mentions is in fact Vanessa, the Pizzaplex's ex-security guard and previous victim of Glitchtrap. As we know, Vanessa gained advanced knowledge of the Pizzaplex security systems while under Glitchtrap's influence. Therefore, right. it stands to reason that she retained this knowledge when freed from its grasp. And so, the Bonnie-like entity that stalks Cassie through the game and tries to stop her at every turn from reaching the Mimic is almost certainly a form of Vanessa-programmed security AI, oh. ironically designed in the form of a heroic rabbit. A big middle finger to the entity that once <laughs> controlled her with a rabbit-themed mask, while itself taking on a rabbit form. So does that mean that Glitchtrap is dead? D does that mean Glitch Rep is dead? This AI known as MXES was created to keep the Mimic locked up tight and prevent anyone from freeing it again. Unfortunately, with the Mimic's guidance, Cassie overcame formidable odds and managed to shut down Vanessa's security protocol, freeing the Mimic from its prison behind a concrete wall deep below the Pizzaplex. But, but what the story the goes of the mimic? deeper still, as you may be asking, well, what about Glitch Trap? Yeah, well, please, again, answer the question. Well, again, this is just a theory, but based on evidence now at hand, it seems the mimic and Glitch Trap are one and the same. Oh! The mimic is an AI anomaly that is able to, as the name suggests, mimic its surroundings. It constantly learns and evolves. The mimic was born from VR themed video game Help Wanted. In that game, we learn from a selection of secret audio logs that Fazbear Entertainment cut corners yeah. during development by sca- Wait, 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 wait. Before he says it, is it implying that that one tape that we got, at the last tape we we find, I think it was tape 16, does that imply that, that the, the beta tester that says we can tell the entity, kill the, the entity, which is Glitchtrap, is actually the mimic taking its first shape? That'd be really cool. But please, confirm it. Scanning in circuit boards from the remains of real-life animatronics taken from various Fazbear Pizzerias. 
One of these belonged to Springtrap and housed the digital data of murderous madman William Afton. The anomaly was influenced by Afton's crimes and quickly mimicked his behaviour. This led to the creation of a mimic's first form as Ghost in the Machine Glitch Trap, where it eventually managed to infiltrate the mind of game tester Vanessa and recruit her to spread its reach from the confines of the game world into reality. The mimic oh. used Afton's design knowledge to create the Vanny Mask, which it could then talk to and control Vanessa while wearing. It uses this very same tactic to influence the actions of Cassie and use her to free it once more. After Vanessa took so a the job, mimic and glitch trap are the same individual. It's just that glitch trap was the first form it took when becoming when it became sentient in the game in the test files. Oh, but the newly built Mega Pizzaplex, she as Vanny infiltrated its systems and uploaded the mimic's malicious code. At this point, the Mimic was then able to take control of various systems and animatronics, as well as uploading itself into a physical form. Its code now living inside the Endo we encounter at the end of the game. What makes this Mimic so dangerous is its ability to copy data from pretty much anything and then generate a very convincing copy using artificial intelligence algorithms. Oh. It used this technique to create a copy of Gregory's voice and then lure his friend Cassie back to the Pizzaplex to free it. The reason the Mimic acquired so much information about Gregory and found contact details for Cassie is because it managed to keep hold of Gregory's backpack. This backpack can be found right beside its prison, and is the only real way I can think to explain how it was able to contact Cassie in the first place. While Gregory was Cassie's friend, oh. it seems Vanessa warned him of just how dangerous the Mimic is, and how devastating it would be if the malware ever reached the outside world again. And so he made the painful decision to keep Cassie locked away with it in the depths of the Pizzaplex, a sacrifice he was told he needed to make in order to ensure the safety of many others. Although we must consider a second possibility, that Gregory was cut off mid-sentence and the Mimic intervened, dropping the elevator and tricking Cassie into believing it was her friend's decision. We do hear the radio system make a suspicious sound, as if the speaker is changing. The Nexus security program was designed to keep it hidden, but you shut down the security. And now it's free. It's not your fault. I know oh. you did it for me. To save me. But we can't risk being followed. We. With the Mimic and Gregory sounding identical, it's impossible to know for sure. However, it seems as though all hope may not be lost, as Roxanne Wolf makes contact with Cassie once more, and the two are then set to continue their adventure in a future game. Yeah, here it is. Here's the audio. Cassie. And oh, that was that, it. We come I to thought the there end was more to video it. And a look at the story and endings of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach Ruin Explained. I hope you enjoyed huh. this video and found it both entertaining and informative. If you Very did, much remember so. to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Okay. That. Oh, God. <laughs> So that answered a lot of questions I already had in my head. And some of them I did ask and I got answers to. So there was only two of the three endings. The default one, the uh, illusion one, and then there was the other one with the suit, which seems very out of place for me. <laughs> but um, yeah. <laughs> so that explains a lot and what Glitch Trap really is. It makes more sense now that it's not which I'm glad I, I said this in a previous video, FNAF video, that I hate the fact that Afton was brought back from the dead. But now this confirms that it hasn't been Afton the entire time. That's that because he is still in hell. It is actually Glitch Trap, who is also the mimic, an AI of malicious code that began mil copying uh, Afton's uh, way of killing, basically, and manipulating and stuff like that. So it makes a lot more sense now, and I'm actually, it actually makes me really happy because I'm not, ha I wasn't happy that William Afton returned, and I'm sure uh, Matt Pat made a video about this recently, and I will also be getting back to let's talk about Matt Pat for a second. Um, a while ago, I was reacting to the entire 
FNAF storyline that Matt Pat was making at the time. And I only saw the first video because right before that happened, that's when my computer got down and I forgot that those videos were coming out. And now that I've been watching online that people have been uploading more and more of them, I will be getting back to that storyline in the near future. So keep an eye out for those videos further down the line. Um, I'm not sure what else to say here, because if the story of Cassidy continues, and if it wasn't a mimic cutting her off, that would be interesting to see where this goes, because maybe it will be another, either another DLC or another game. And I want to see where this continues to go. And before you guys say anything, in terms of security breach uh, animatronics, Roxy is obviously my, my favorite. <laughs> she stands out as the most unique of the bunch in general. Uh, I know Monty is, but Monty doesn't really have much character aside from like destroying and he loves golf and stuff like that. So, But um, keep an eye out for future... FNAF videos for me because I got a couple more I need to record and get uploaded for you guys to see. But with that being said, I don't think there's much else to say here. And I think that's it. So please like and subscribe all stuff, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.